So welcome to Durga Soft online training sessions. Myself K Prakash Babu having fifteen plus years of experience as a trainer. And coming to this course, the title of this course is data structures and algorithms data structures and algorithms with python python so dsa with python batch 6 totally we completed five batches successfully and this is nothing but fifth batch what we have the duration of this session is six weekends six weekends okay so these classes will be there only on saturday saturday and sunday saturday and sunday of course tomorrow itself the class is going to start tomorrow itself the class is going to start and the timings of this session is uh, from 6 pm 6 pm to 9 pm regularly the session is going to be taken from 6 pm to 9 pm but this is already the batch is formed today is add-on session add-on session in the sense so just to increase the members just we planned another add-on session but the regular class timings from tomorrow onwards it will be from 6 pm to 9 pm and the fees for this batch is fees for this batch is rupees 2000 rupees 2000 where you are going to get live classes live classes plus you are going to get running notes along with the videos so these videos will have six months access but remaining running notes is a permanent lifetime validity will be there so if you are willing with all these details you can contact 9642212143 you can contact to this number for registration purpose okay and very very important you must have the prerequisite the prerequisite for this course is nothing but compulsory you should know python if you know python then only it will be very easy to understand okay this is nothing but what we have about a simple introduction to our curriculum anyway i will provide the syllabus dsa with python syllabus in this syllabus we have around some 20 25 topics are there the first topic is introduction part introduction to dsa what is mean by data structures what is mean by algorithms just we are going to see the introduction part next sample sample basic python programs we are going to cover because compulsory you should know the basic idea of python then only we can implement the programs keeping that in mind just we are going to focus on some sample some sample basic python programs we are going to cover okay just to to check your python knowledge or to just refreshing purpose we are going to cover this next in the third chapter there are some python inbuilt data structures are there there are some python inbuilt data structures are there internally python is going to provide support for some basic data structures like string data structure tuple data structure list data structure like that it is providing support for some basic data structures that we are going to cover so after that there is one concept is there with name sample algorithms sample algorithms and implementations in this case also we are going to provide some python programs but we will prepare so a python program uh, i mean we will prepare an algorithm and slowly we will develop that algorithm okay for the implementation purpose 
so python is not providing the support for arrays but arrays also is there in our data structures concept that's why internally python people provided one separate module to deal with arrays that is nothing but what array module we are going to discuss about array module and even the programs related to the arrays also we are going to discuss next and after that we have string modules a uh, string module is also there along with that we are going to cover some programs related to the strings also in this session okay next next and after that we have another biggest concept is there which is nothing but recursion and uh, applications applications on recursion also we are going to discuss applications on recursion just to give me a second guys one emergency call please wait right recursion and applications on the recursion we are going to see recursion is a very very important topic in general okay recursion means what a function which is called by itself a function which is called by itself is called as a recursion sometimes function in the sense uh, i think already you know in in your programming language itself you come across these kind of things. So if you want to reuse any concept in the programming, then we are going for this functions concept. So here in the functions, sometimes if the problem is very big, we can solve that problem by using this recursion. Recursion means already a function will be there. We are going to call that function again and again. There are so many benefits are there with the help of this uh, recursion concept in the programming. So here we are going to focus on what are the examples, what are the applications that we are going to cover under recursion. After that, there is one beautiful concept is there with name backtracking. Backtracking, I can say it is also an application of recursion. Okay, like uh, the extension for the recursion is nothing but this backtracking. So once if you apply backtracking, then we can solve majority of the programs. Like you may heard a uh, uh, n-queens problem is there. We can solve the n-queens problem by using this recursion. Okay, and backtracking help. Then even Sudoku problem is there. That Sudoku problem also we can solve. So here we are going to use n-queens problem. Okay, we are going to solve n-queens problem. And even we are going to solve Sudoku, Sudoku problem also. These two things we are going to solve by using this recursion and backtracking. So after that, we are going to cover so different types of sorting, sorting algorithms. We are going to cover different types of sorting algorithms which are available. Then even we are going to discuss about the searching algorithms which are existed in data structures. After that, divide and conquer there is one policy is there with the name divide and conquer so divide and conquer in the sense same like recursion problem is a very big we can divide that problem into individual problems so that policy is called as a divide and once if you divide the problem into small small problems you can find a solution for those small problems later you can combine them so that a technique is called as a dividing and a combining divide and a compare like that we have so next and after that uh, even we can cover these by using uh, there is one concept is there called linked list i think you know very well about this we are going to see single linked list double linked list circular single linked list circular double linked list 
So linked list in the sense, it is very, very important interview question also. Majority of the uh, students, they don't know anything about this linked list. But when you are attending the interview, compulsory question is nothing but what the linked list. What is mean by linked list? How you can apply this linked list? So means um, collection of notes, collection of notes. But how we are going to provide implementation around 20 to 25 functionalities we are going to see on this. Okay. So after that, we are going to discuss about our normal data structures concept like stack data structure, stack data structure, applications of this stack data structure, next queue data structure. Okay. So applications which we are going to use on this queue. Next and after that, we are going to discuss about um, hash table, hash table or I can say hashing. What is mean by hashing? How you can apply hashing? Okay. Next and after that, tree data structure. Next and after that, we are going to talk about um, priority, priority queue. How you can able to use this uh, priority queue? Next and after that, graph, graph data structure. Graph data structure. Next, we have dynamic programming dynamic programming there are some problems with the recursion to overcome that overlapping solutions we are using this dynamic programming and there is one approach is there called a greedy method greedy method is there so maybe we are going to talk about that uh, greedy algorithms how you can implement and later we are going to discuss about the complexity calculations complexities how you can calculate time complexity how we can calculate space complexity. Of course, the topics order may change while taking the classes. First, we will discuss complexities. Then bit manipulations. I think you know already bit, bitwise operators in every programming language we have. Okay. So how you can implement these bitwise operators? How effectively we can use these bitwise operators in our data structures also? we are going to cover in these sessions. These are nothing but around 22 topics which we are going to take in this course. Okay. Now, so on this syllabus or on this course, if you are having any queries, you can ask so that we will start now. Any doubt up to this? Any queries that you have? No, sir, continue. Right. Yeah. Now, coming to today's session, anyway, it is a demo, right? That's why. Just I will take some basic programs. Okay. Like, first example, I want to write a Python program to print hello world message. To print hello world message on the screen on the screen i want to write a program to print a hello world message on the screen i think you know very well in every programming language this is the first program which we are going to solve if you take any programming language like a c or c plus plus or java or python you can take any programming language the first first topic the first first program which we are going to practice is nothing but what how to print hello world message on the screen. Now we will see how you can implement a program to do this in Python. There are different approaches are there, but I am taking a standard approach. The first thing what we have to do is we need to create a new Python program. So this is nothing but edit plus editor which I am using directly. Uh, you, it is going to highlight the syntaxes when you are typing the program. So if there is any error is there, easily you can able to detect such a type of uh, so coloring, syntax highlighting will be there here. That's why I'm using this edit plus. Of course, in our course, we will touch with different IDEs. Like maybe I'm going to use Jupyter Notebook. Okay, I'm going to use a spider. Okay, I'm going to use PyCharm, like different, different IDs, VS code, we are going to use. Now I'm selecting Python code. We have to write the program. 
see when you are taking other programming languages there will be a structure like we have to write main method inside that we have to write the code and we need to save the program and we have to compile like that so here also saving and executing is a common but python program is not having any structure we can write python program directly to implement scripting so directly we can write scripting programming we can write functional programming we can write object oriented program directly so but here what i am going to do is i am taking scripting approach because my task is very simple to print the message except that i am not doing any activity that's why i am taking this scripting approach in the scripting approach i am taking simply print so hello world like this i am taking a message so you can save this program and you can run this how to save this program just click on save button okay you can go to any folder sir i am going to take a test test folder is there inside c drive so there only i am going to save all my programs and i am going to execute from there so what is the file name that i am giving is test.py like that i am giving because python files must have an extension .py once if you press enter so automatically the file got saved now we can execute this python file right so for that i am taking command prompt i am taking command prompt from this command prompt we can execute in which folder the file got saved in c drive there is a folder with name test in that test folder the file is available i entered into test folder i entered into test folder inside this i am taking py space test.py there is one command is there with name py we can use that command to execute our python program once if you type py space test.py once if you press enter key automatically the file got executed and the output what we are getting is nothing but what hello world just it is printing a message saying hello world like this we have this is nothing but a python program how we can able to print a message on the screen like that we have i hope everyone got a clarity how to print a simple message on the screen okay in python sir of course already you know this concept just i executed a simple program to demonstrate so no doubts right up to this please confirm Yeah, right now second program i want to apply functional programming in this case so consider i want to write a python program uh, to print okay python program python program to print good evening message i want to write a python program to print good evening message okay for the given username i want to take some username and i want to print good morning message or good evening message to that particular user so here reusability concept i am trying to include means what directly you can take a username from the user and you can print a hello good evening followed by the name but it is one time activity right you can run multiple times by supplying multiple inputs but that is not my requirement i want to create a function to do this operation for that function we have to provide one argument that argument is nothing but name so that whenever you are getting a name i will pass that name and i will execute for that what i am doing is i will create a function what is that function is f u n or let it be wish something like this i am taking which will take a parameter called name in python there is no curly brackets to provide blocks these blocks in python are provided by using this indentation we are using a concept of indentation to provide the blocks so in this indentation 
just we have to write the statements provided in that particular line once if you type colon you can see the control is coming here right so whatever instructions you are writing in this scope is related to wish function once if you come out from this it is nothing but independent statement like in python we don't have any blocks by using curly brackets that's why we are applying this concept now here i'm going to print a message saying okay good evening good evening like this i am taking followed by the name name whatever name you are giving let us consider this is not name it is username that's all a simple function i created what is the advantage of this function you can call this function any number of times by providing the arguments sir first time i am calling this function by passing prakash sir what will happen it will display welcome message for the prakash now i want to reuse this function that is the reason why i created this functional programming i want to reuse that yes you can use i am calling wish function by providing durga as the input now i want to create the function called wish by providing some name called kalyan in this case what will happen function is only one time defined but how many times we are calling friends three times we are calling by passing the inputs we are calling three times so now i want to run this code let us see what will happen we are getting good evening prakash we are getting good evening durga and we are getting good evening kalyan like how many times it is coming sir three times it is printing this is the way how we can able to execute the code i hope everyone got very clear clarity introduction to functional programming just i applied some functional programming on this so please confirm do you have any doubt up to this whatever i covered Homodox. Right. Next. The next one, what I am going to do is, I want to implement a Python program. Okay, Python program. To check whether to check whether the given number is an even number or odd number. I want to check whether. the given number is even number or odd number how to decide whether the given number is even number or odd number sir very simple we know the basic thumb rule okay for for checking whether the given number is even number or odd number what is that logic if you divide any number with 2 if it is divisible by 2 we can say that number is nothing but even number if it is not divisible by 2 we can say that number is nothing but odd number basic thumb rule is there i want to take that thumb rule here def let us take function 1 i am taking i am giving a value of n as the input suppose if that n is divisible by 2 you know already if n is divisible by 2 then what is the meaning of this yes in this case the given number is nothing but what even number like that we have now since it is a function i am going to return a message saying it is nothing but what even number if this condition is not satisfied friends then i am printing the message saying the given number is odd number okay i am defining a function called fun1 and i am dividing that number with a percentage 2 if it is divisible i am printing that message is uh, that particular number is nothing but even number otherwise that number is nothing but odd number like that i am taking now i want to define another function for doing the same activity but anyway that we will discuss later now consider i am going to print function 1 by passing 4 function 1 by passing 5 we know 4 is nothing but even number since it is divisible by 
it will print it will return a message saying even number that message it is going to print on the screen otherwise it is going to print the message saying odd number now i want to run this code let us check what will happen you can see the message what we are getting is nothing but even number and the second number is nothing but what odd number like that we are getting this is nothing but the first approach sir we can solve this problem in second approach also what is that a second approach i will explain don't worry as of now do you have any doubt in this please confirm Is there right. any first approach? No. Right. Let us go for second approach. Sir, second approach is also the same task. It is taking a number. But um, how you can say the given number is even number or odd number in another way? See, I am taking the help of these bitwise operators. There is one concept is there with name bitwise operators. We can take the help of these bitwise operators to decide. That's why in our syllabus, in the last topic I mentioned, there is a concept called bit manipulations. I included one concept like bit manipulations. Sir, in that bit manipulations, if you are taking any number, you can convert that number into binary so we can decide whether it is even or odd. How you can decide, for example, if you take a decimal number called 1, I want to convert this decimal number into binary. Sir, what will happen? So, it will become 0, 0, 0, 1. If you take a number called 2, you can convert this into binary. It will become 0, 0, 1, 0. If you take a number 3, you can convert this into binary. 0, 0, 1, 1. If you take a number 4, you can convert it into binary. 8, 4, 2, 1. If you take a number 5, you can convert it into binary 0, 1, 0, 1. If you take a number 6, you can convert it into binary 8, 4, 2, 1 like this. Of course, how to convert also, I will demonstrate in our bit manipulations chapter. If you see at the top level here, see there is one small concept is there. What is that concept is? If you observe these binary numbers, if any binary number, if any binary number is ending with 1, if any binary number ending with 1, I can say that is nothing but odd number. Is it correct? You can see these first 6 numbers. 1 ending with 1, it is an odd number. 3 ending with 1, it is nothing but odd number. 5 ending with 1, it is an odd number. So, that last bit is always called as LSB. The full form is least significant bit. LSB means what? Least significant bit. So, if least significant bit is 1 uh, or is 0, then is 0. So, then it is, then it is, e, sorry, it is odd number. It is odd number like that we have. Sir, if least significant bit is 1, then it is a, sorry, it, it is even number, it is even number, reverse I have written. And this one is nothing but what? Odd number. Like based on the least significant bit, we can decide. Okay. Sir, if the logic is clear, now I am going to write, I am going to take the help of bitwise operators to check whether it is even or odd. Are you clear with this concept, whatever I explained till now? Yes, sir. Now, I am going to take the help of these uh, bitwise operators. For example, for example, take the number like n is equal to 4. If you convert it into binary, what will happen? Okay, you may get 8421 code like this. Now, I am performing under operation with one sir because i am going to focus only on this bit that's why i am performing under operation with one now what will happen if you perform under operation with one sir you can see the result so this one is nothing but zero 
this one is nothing but zero this one is nothing but zero this one is also zero sir if you convert it into decimal result is zero if your result is zero then it is not odd number it is even number let us take odd number and see what will happen if you take n is equal to 5 sir convert it into binary 8421 code now i want to perform and operation with one sir now what will happen zero and zero will become zero one and zero will become zero zero and zero will become zero one and one will become one what is its decimal equivalent it is one. nothing now you can see so why i am one why i am performing and operation with one you got clarity now the reason for performing and operation with one is nothing but i will focus only on least significant bit what we have because if you perform and operation with zero anyway the result will be dummy so that's why i'm specially focusing on the bit called one okay only least significant bit i'm focusing sir like this in the bit manipulations there are n number of applications are there I am trying to cover almost 10 applications related to these bit manipulations. You will get more clarity on that. Okay. Maybe immediately within one week, next week, of course, from tomorrow, the regular syllabus is going to start. Maybe next week, we are planning for this concept. Okay. Anyway, I will explain. Don't worry. Now, we can perform under operation with these so that you can able to get the result directly. Sir, what is that under operation I am doing here is... Very simple, sir. I am performing and operation with one. That's all. The logic I am going to write here. Listen carefully. So, I will do n and operation with one. Sir, if you are doing this, if your result is one, can I say that number is odd? I am performing n and operation with 1. If you are getting result as a 0, I can say it is nothing but even number. This is the logic, right? So, I am going to use this logic. So, listen carefully. If n compulsory, we have to take the parenthesis. The reason for that is, so logic, bitwise operators are having highest priority than comparison operators. That is the reason. If it is equal to 0, then I am going to return a message to the even number. So, otherwise, otherwise, I am going to return the message saying odd number like that we have. Okay, like this I am going to take. Sir, you have two versions are there for the same program. First version is nothing but by using this percentage symbol. Second version by using this and operator. Among these two, which is the best version? In my point of view, in my point of view, sir, second one is the best. Why? The reason is whatever data you are giving internally, not only Python, every programming language is going to convert into binary format. Compulsory, we have to convert it into binary. While doing this, Binary number percentage division also should going to be happen, right? Again, it is also a very difficult job. But if you are providing any operator which directly deals with the binary numbers, he is very efficient. Keeping that in mind, when compared with the first version, second version is very easy to implement. Now, I want to print for first five numbers for each i value in the range of 1 to 6. Sir, this loop is going to generate the numbers from 1 to 5. 1 to 5. Now, I am trying to print i, comma, function 1 of i, comma, function 2 of i, like that I am taking. Okay? So, like that I am taking. Sir, one second.
yeah so now you can see uh, what this for loop is going to do it will generate the numbers from 1 to 5 it will generate the numbers from 1 to 5 and every time it is printing that number along with is it even or odd is it even or odd it will print by using both functions so separation is equal to i am giving tab space separated by tab space it is going to print let us check you can see we got a table where every number along with whether it is even or odd in the first version is it even or odd in the second version is it even or odd in the third version we are printing okay this is nothing but how we can able to develop this application any doubt friends up to this this application clear right please confirm yes sir clear right good so now the next concept i mean next application um, what i am going to take here is factorial i want to write a python program to find factorial to find factorial of the given number i want to write a python program to find factorial of the given number sir for this also we have different implementations will be there okay you know factorial it is something like recursive calculation of the values now consider i am taking first function okay in this function i am taking the value of n so natural by using some normal approach i want to find out factorial how to do that initially i am going to consider the default factorial is one because we don't know right if you take zero uh, you know factorial is dealing with multiplication factorial is dealing with multiplication that's why i am going to initialize the value of f is equal to one for each i value okay in the range of for each i value in the range of 1 to n plus 1 for each i value in the range of 1 to n plus 1 this loop is going to generate the numbers from 1 to n now i am taking f is equal to f into i i am taking f is equal to f into i now i want to return i want to return at last f where that's all this is nothing but a simple function which is going to calculate factorial for the given number sir i want to test whether it is working properly or not how we can test for example consider the default factorial which i am taking is one the default factorial which i am taking is one now my requirement is consider the value of n is equal to 4 what is a 4 factorial 24 so it is going to generate a loop which will start from one so one two three four that loop is going to generate the values from one to n n value is nothing but what four that's why this loop is generating the values from one to four in this case what will happen when we are running first time one into one because what is the formula that we framed f is equal to f into i so what will happen one into one okay so just give me a second because actually we have another batch at six o'clock i will ask them to join at 6 15 like that okay please wait
right sorry for the delay now you can see what is happening internally here so when i is equal to 1 when i is equal to 1 we are multiplying f is equal to f into i previous factorial into current i value previous factorial is 1 1 into 1 will become 1 for i is equal to 2 the same calculation like previous factorial is 1 1 into 2 will become 2 now sir here previous factorial is 2 2 into 3 will become 6 so previous factorial is 6 current i value is 4 6 into 4 will become 24 so this is nothing but uh, 4 factorial right like that by using looping concept we can implement in this style so do you have any doubt up to this whatever i covered please confirm no sir no doubt right now i want to apply the same technique by using another another way another approach i want to implement what is that another approach is sir, your voice is breaking sir. Hello. sir is my voice is breaking please confirm everyone yes sir your voice is breaking sir ayyo one second i will change the network Yeah, is it clear now? Is it clear now? Hello, sir. Ah, uh, is it clear now? No, sir. Sir, everyone, please confirm. Is my voice? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, now it's clear. Right. The second approach, what I am taking here is by using a recursion also we can implement this task what is the recursion is i am taking second method for this if the value of n is equal to 1 or if the value of n is equal to 0 i am going to return 1 otherwise i will return n into function 2 of n minus 1 like that we have another version is there this concept is called as recursion i am using which method here recursion method i am using to find this how to implement this i will explain with the help of diagram anyway these concepts will be there in detail suppose if you take the value of n is equal to 5 if you take the value of n is equal to 5 okay So, first time we are going to call the function by passing the value of n as a 5. It will call n value as a 5. So, it will check is that n value is equal to 0? No. Otherwise, what will happen? This formula is going to evaluate. What is that formula? Sir, 5 into again we are calling the same function by passing n minus 1, 5 minus 1, which is nothing but 4. So, the same function again we are calling by passing minus 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. Again for 4 it is going to call. Now what will happen? It will check is n is equal to 0. No. Again we are going to call this by passing 4 into 4 minus 1 which is nothing but 3. Again it will call 3 into 3 minus 1 2. So like that how many times it is going to evaluate? So, until getting 0, it will evaluate. So, 2 into 2 into 1. Again, sir, 1 into f of 0. Whenever you are getting the value of n is equal to 0. In such a case, again, we are not calling. Simply, we are returning the value called 1. Simply, we are returning the value called 1. So, what will happen? This function returned the value 1. 1 into 1. So, who called this? For them, it is going to get 1. 1 into 2, which will become 2. So, 2 into 3, which will become 6. 6 into 4, which will become 24. So, 24 into 5, which is nothing but 120. So, the 5 factorial is 
120 by using which approach i applied recursion concept here i applied recursion concept here by using a recursion this is nothing but the result what we got like that we have okay so everyone feeling comfortable up to this clear right yeah clear good now the next method what we have here is def i am taking third function what is a third way here is see in python they have implemented one predefined module with name math math they have defined one predefined module with name math in that math module there is one special method is there with name factorial so already they have implemented the code simply it will return that beyond that nothing already they have implemented simply it will return beyond that nothing now sir if you want to work with this compulsory we have to import that math module then only it will work now for i in the range of 1 to okay 1 to 6 that means it will generate the values up to 5 even if you want better to take from 0 so what will happen number and factorial of that number by using the first method factorial of the method by using second method factorial of the number by using third method all these three i am applying here separated by slash t that's all friends now i want to run this program and i want to test how it is working let us execute this code sir you can see very clearly the number zero means its factorial is one the number one means its factorial is one the number two means its factorial is two number three factorial is six number four factorial is 24 so number five factorial is 120 like that we have i think everyone got very clear idea how to find out factorial of the given number so do you have any doubt in this particular code how you can find out factorial is everything is a clear for you people yes i'm clear sir right like this just i explained only sample things like that we are going to discuss in detail with this i am going to stop our demo session sir uh, this is the only demo that we have so from tomorrow onwards we will have our regular classes and the people who are willing to continue in this batch it is a matter of 2000 i think four movies ticket price okay so but definitely there will be a huge impact in your curriculum you can keep this uh, data structures uh, with algorithms in your resume your resume weight is going to increase okay so with this i am stopping the demo the people who want to continue sir i am willing to continue in this batch means immediately you can make the payment okay and continue at 6 30 class if you ask admin team to share regular class link after making the payment they will share okay so you can attend immediately so otherwise you can take the time and tomorrow you can join sir here already for the existing batch i have completed the first chapter like introduction to data structures and algorithms completely i have taken theoretical part for them so today i am planning to take so sample basic python programs for those people okay i am taking sample basic python programs for those people today okay around some 20 or 25 programs i am taking for them from 6 30 to 8 o'clock the people who are willing to continue sir i liked this course i want to join means immediately you can start making the payment and join otherwise you can join tomorrow these lectures i will provide in the form of video if you are having any doubt you can ask okay this is nothing but what we have and tomorrow compulsory i am going to start this array module and string module array module and string module and even this sample algorithms also i am going to explain so that's why 
today and tomorrow sessions are very very important okay don't miss the classes okay right any doubt up to this if you are having any queries you can feel free to ask yes, sir. right sir then we will I got, continue. I got yes. a question. Would I get a link for the six o'clock class, please? Oh, no, no. You just you can contact to our admin team after they making. They haven't sent me anything yet. No, no, no. Just uh, I have shared that uh, information in the chat window, right? And I've already paid for you know the six o'clock, and I was waiting. The old link is now working for me. Uh, I have not started yet, right? It will start at 6.30. I think you have received the mail. Please check it once. It will start at 6.30. Right. So you, you are already 6 o'clock student, right, Ben? Yes. Uh, yeah, you will start the session. We will start the session at 6.30. I think already admin shared that information to you through mail. Just you can check it. Just now only they have sent, okay? All right. Thank you. 6.30. Just join at 6.30. We will have our... Hmm? Right, sir. Thank you. See you in the tomorrow's class.